Video people, okay, so let's go over how to render and export uh, your project when you're getting ready to turn it in. So let's say that this is your finished project in your file and your um, timeline, and you can see that this bar is the yellow bar above here means that it's unrendered. Uh, it means that it's partially rendered, um, but it's not ready to be exported yet until it's green. Yours might be red if you've got a lot of uh, effects layered. So you go down to Sequence, Render Into Out. This will render everything on the timeline, uh, video and audio, everything. It's the, it's the best one. You can render a segment, by the way, um, if you just want to test a specific um, part of your timeline, if you don't want to wait this long. So that took no time because I'm just doing a tiny segment as an example. Now you can see that bar is green, so good to go. So now you want to highlight everything or do edit select all to select everything that you're going to be exporting. I like to always use the plus minus keys to zoom out if I've got a lot in my project and make sure there's not like a little abandoned clip over to the side or something because then you're going to be exporting maybe a way longer project with a lot of empty space. Um, so once you've got everything highlighted that you know you're, you're going to want to be exporting, go down to File, Export Media. And it shows a little preview right here. It'll say that you're um, you're doing the entire sequence, um, sequence in out, or this is what I had selected, or entire sequence. Um, it'll say the duration, so you can get a look as the preview here. You can even kind of scroll through this and see what it's going to look like, so you can check for errors. Um, if you wanted to just select a tiny uh, specific sequence, you could choose that use these guys and say, oh, I'm only going to select this really narrow range, this, which might be of use if you just want to test a little bit if you've got, say, an hour-long film or something like that. Anyway, uh, or you just want to test it out. So now look over here. Um, see where it says match sequence settings? Um, it's going to be, that preset is already going to be uh, selected. This is fine. Uh, high bit rate just means it's going to be processed at high quality. Um, this H.264 is pretty universal for an encoding format, so that's fine. Um, some of these are made uh, for if you're uploading to YouTube or Vimeo, um, or if it's you know designed for like a cell um, or Facebook, whatever. You can see all these options. I just leave it here. It's going to match how uh, the footage was imported. It's, it's going to match the sequence of how your footage was captured in the first place. So that's fine. Um, output name, you could click go here and put it exactly where you want it, where your destination, maybe the desktop, maybe your external hard drive, um, save it as whatever you want it to be, make sure it's you know exporting to an MP4, um, pretty universal codec, take a look here at the output settings, it says the destination, you know, just check and make sure this is all right, um, that's the pixel resolution right, um, frames per second, um, progressive um, is how it's, how it's being um, uh, the how it's being scanned, fine. All of this is good. Um, shows the sound specs. Um, it shows the source sequence, so you can make sure that those match. Um, and then you go down here and just kind of check things. That all looks fine. Frame rate's fine. I mean, this is just all how it was captured, or in my case, downloaded. Uh, if you want to boost the quality, you could render it maximum depth. I usually check that one, and I usually check this one down here. Use maximum. Uh, render quality and it says down here if you hover gives better quality scaling but increases the encode time scaling meaning uh, if you're gonna be viewing this you know upscaling on a, on a big screen or something that it's gonna preserve the quality um, might not matter if you're just designing this to be viewed on a phone um, or a you know lap laptop screen but I usually click these two because it's gonna give you the best um, video quality possible um, and then it'll say down here uh, the frame estimated file size. Um, so this is a tiny clip. You want to be able to keep your project under, you know, 200 megabytes, um, which I don't think should be a problem since we're all just doing, uh, you know, music videos. Nothing's going to be crazy extravagant. Um, unless you have a ton of effects that will, that might, you know, boost it a little bit. And then there are also programs uh, which are really easy, such as Handbrake, to uh, condense a file. Um, to export it into something that uh, is, you know, manageable so that you're not dealing with these huge, clunky um, files taking up a lot of space and a lot of resources. So, once that's all done, press export. 
and um, hmm. I'm drinking a coffee right now. You can't see me, but it's uh, it's keeping me going. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Okay. Awesome. And then you know you just check, search for this um, file. Oh, uh, there it is. Nope. Too much stuff here. Well, that's where I'm going to end this, but y you get the idea. It'll be somewhere in here. Uh, <laughs> okay, great. And then it's exported, and then that's that's it. Um, I feel like I should have ended that with finding the file, but it's just buried in here somewhere. Anyway, that is how you... Uh, render and export uh, your project.